Good day. Welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Thelma Okuru. In a move to promote diplomatic ties, the Indonesian government says Nigeria remains top priority on its foreign policy list. The country's foreign affairs minister paid a visit to Niger's minister of foreign affairs, Geoffrey Onyema, in Abuja. At the meeting, Niger's minister agreed that the visit will be of immense economic benefits to both Nigerians. It's the first visit by an Indonesian minister to Nigeria in the last 30 years. We really welcome your visit uh, in this context because um, it's going to hopefully kickstart um, a new uh, level of cooperation. We hope that our principals, our presidents will be able in the not too distant future to visit uh, each other's uh, uh, countries. Uh, to really solidify uh, this uh, relationship uh, that we are, are developing. Um, we have experiences, some security challenges, which have become global challenges of terrorism, and um, that we, we both confront, although the levels and scales might be a bit different. And, um, and of course, you as a, um, a major oil and gas producer, um, have also been um, facing the same challenges that we have been, a drop in price of those commodities uh, and um, the challenge of diversifying our economies. In Indonesian foreign pol uh, policy, we put Africa as our priority. And of course, when we did talk about Africa, Nigeria will be the main part of it. So Nigeria will become the priority of Indonesian uh, foreign policy. One message that Indonesia brings to the uh, business forum and to my visit here in Abuja is that Indonesia is your friend and Indonesia is your reliable business uh, partner. A former Minister of Health in Nigeria, Babatunde Oshoti Mehi, has passed away. He died in the early hours of Monday at the age of 68. Until his death, Oshoti Mehi was the head of the United Nations Population Fund. He was also a champion for girls and women's health. His family has confirmed the incident, saying his burial arrangements will be announced in due time. Oshoti Mehi was health minister between December 2008 and March 2010. He was also married with five children and several grandchildren. Today marks the World Environment Day, a day about raising awareness on nature and importance of protecting the environment. This year's theme is connecting people to nature. In Niger, the resounding call for global action to appreciate the environment was loud and clear. Residents in the country's commercial city of Lagos organized events from neighborhood cleanups to walks as well as lectures to raise awareness on what can be done to preserve the planet. World Environment Day is the world's biggest celebration of nature, of the environment. It's been going on for over 30 years now, and it's bringing attention to the fact that we need to celebrate, we need to connect with nature. Right now, we don't realize that we are part of nature. Man can no longer continue to be apart from nature. We are a part of nature. So it's a great way to celebrate nature, which is our ultimate mother, our life support system. We need to plant. Look, every man in his lifetime requires at least 80 trees just for his own oxygenation. So the implication is that everybody in Lagos should have at least 80 trees that they have planted. And that doesn't include the uh, oxygen uh, that you require or the carbon dioxide that you burn off with your energy and all this. So we need to keep planting trees, trees, trees and more trees. This is the God given solution and we can't be wiser than God. Our government to begin to look inward and look deep and begin to enact law, create policies that will soften, you know, the people that are actively participating in climate change business because it's a serious business. We need a lot of awareness for people to know that the climate change is real and the high time we begin to do something about it. The high time we begin to talk about it in our own little way. That is our message to the government this year. 
Nigeria's acting president, Yamushi Bajo, is talking tough against corruption. He says the current administration's anti-corruption stance is being derailed by corrupt banks and institutions. The Nigerian leader says institutions are aiding corrupt individuals to transfer money out of the country without the knowledge of the government. He's now advocating for laws to ensure such banks or institutions are punished accordingly. There's a new party in town and it's hoping to take over the country. The Advanced People's Democratic Alliance, ABDA, was unveiled in Nigeria's capital city of Abuja. A surprise member of the party is media mogul Raymond Dokwesi. He joined members of other political parties in the country to form this new party. Dokwesi was a prominent member of Nigeria's former ruling party, the People's Democratic Party. My dear compatriots, for the avoidance of doubt, the APDA represents a fresh opportunity on our own new platform for a new generation of committed and capable leaders, poised to redirect our collective mandate, economic stagnation, leadership failure, and betrayal of the popular will and aspiration of the masses. We have identified the decadent culture of past party politics, the seat tight arrogance, despotism and looting propensity of our politicians, resulting in marginalization of the masses of the country from the democratic process as the major cause of the constant reversal and negation of the popular will and aspiration for a Nigerian that reflects their dreams and promised land. For this reason, our party is loaded with specific remedies and preventive measures to, to sanitize our political culture, make our leader accountable, and above all, restore the decisive might of the people over the dynamics of the party politics and governance. There is no doubt that most Nigerians are dissatisfied with lack of discipline and near absence of internal party democracy that characterize most of the political parties in existence today. We are determined to present to Nigeria a political party that will be highly disciplined, provoke, provide the level playing field to all its members, remove every trace of godfatherism, and restore the dignity and supremacy of the political party. In the affairs of its members and for the benefit of its members. More on our top stories, the Nigerian government has condemned deadly terrorist attack on the central London Bridge and the borough market. The Foreign Affairs Ministry in a statement said, quote, the government and people of Nigeria stand with the government and people of Great Britain in the face of continued terrorist attacks on innocent victims. Seven people died in the attack in central London on Saturday night and 48 were injured. Police say they have identified the attackers. A coalition of civil society groups in Niger is condemning the concession of Port Harcourt refinery to oil firms Ajib and ENI as well as Owando. In a press briefing held on Monday, chairman of Kaka Cole, who is Debo Adeniro, says the deal between the federal government and the oil firms were unlawful, morally bankrupt and detrimental to the Nigerian economy. He says the concession followed no due process and must be stopped. What we are about to witness is the brazen direct handover of a national asset like the Port Harcourt refinery to private concerns without advertisement without competitive bidding, and in gross violation of the law. This is nothing but an economic crime committed by a government against its own people. We make bold to say that the strict compliance with the laws cannot be sacrificed for some subjective patriotic motives. If we do not hear a reversal of the process or an outright uh, cancellation of this fraud within 48 hours, 
we shall proceed to court to stop the transaction. We have already briefed our lawyers, Mr. Festus Keyamo, for whatever is worth. We shall also proceed to the Senate Committee to defend our position. C. We are also prepared to mobilize Nigerians for street protests if the federal government decide to proceed with this fraudulent transaction without our approval. Nigeria's army says its university in Biu, Bornu State will take off next September. Chief of Army Staff Tukaburo Tai said the university project was captured in the 2017 budget. He will speak in shortly after receiving the certificate of occupancy and the surveyed site master plan from the university site from Governor Kashim Shetema in my degree. The Army Chief says the university is designed to tackle specific challenges facing the Army in the Northeast. The Inspector General of the Nigerian Police Force, Ibrahim Idris, has set up a panel to build the clash between the Niger Navy and the police force last week in Calabar, capital of Cross River State. At least three police officers were killed in the incident, with an unconfirmed number receiving treatment for various injuries. The recommendations of a panel setup will be used to punish the erring officers. This is according to the police chief. The Navy has also set up a panel to investigate the deadly clash. The Lagos State Government has suspended the Oshodi branch of the National Union of Road Transport Workers indefinitely. The suspension is a result of the violence which followed the death of a leader of a motorcycle operators association of Lagos State in Oshodi, Razak Belu, popularly known as Hamburger. The Delta State Government has announced it would shut down the Asaba Airport for repairs. Governor Ifanyo Kowa said major repairs would be carried out at the B section of the airport while repairs on the runway are already nearing completion. He expressed confidence that the airport would be the best in the southeast and south-south region of the country. <laughs> Give him his shoe, he's somewhere here. His phone and uh, everything. Don't do like that to Thank you. So, <laughs> bye bye. Hey, where do you Oga, think? where do you think you are going? Who? Oh. You never shake body. Eh? Yeah. You never shake body. Shake body, wait, wait. see? Huh? You never shake body. Eh? Yeah. I don't get combo for my body. You go take for here. Sit down, Sit down. down. Oh, come, man. What's this man still doing here? They say I should shake body. Eh, I shake body, I shake body. They say I should do it. And I say I don't get combo. You are asking for money. Sorry, Sorry ma'am. Asking for money to bail a suspect is an act of corruption. Both of you will be punished. Corruption is not allowed within the force. Remember, police is your friend. Giving and taking bribe is wrong. Corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now. Corruption, not in my country. Welcome back. Nigerian stocks hit a 23-month high, extending last week's rally and helped by gains in cement, fuel retailing and banking shares. A pickup in oil prices and a more stable currency have improved economic prospects in Nigeria, prompting investors to buy into the stock market. Shares rose on Monday for the fifth consecutive session with Dangote Cement, which accounts for a third of the market's value surging 8.85%. It helped push the benchmark index up by 4.01% to cross 32,000 points in early trading on Monday. It's not only Niger stocks that are seen rise in the debt management office, says Niger's total debt rose to 19.15 trillion naira as of March 2017 from 17.36 trillion naira recorded at the end of last year. Africa's biggest economy, which slipped into recession last year for the first time, in 25 years, raised $1 billion in February and 
$500 million in March from euro bond sales. The government intends to use the money raised to plug its budget deficit and fund infrastructure development. Oil prices reversed gains to trade down on Monday. This comes on concerns the cutting off of ties from with Qatar by top crude oil exporters Saudi Arabia and other Arab states would hamper a global deal to reduce oil production. The move pushed Brent crude prices up as March to trade down 30 cents at $49.65 per barrel, while U.S. crude futures were up at $47.40 per barrel. Seven African migrants died apparently from suffocation after being locked for two days in a truck. The truck was abandoned by people smugglers on the Libyan coast. 28 others, including five women, were rescued on Sunday when the truck was discovered at Garabuli. Libya is the main gateway for migrants trying to reach Europe by sea. Qatar says it's facing a campaign of lies and fabrications aimed at putting the Gulf Arab state under guardianship. This comes after five Arab countries led by Saudi Arabia severed ties with Qatar, accusing it of supporting the Muslim Brotherhood and backing Iran. The countries including Yemen, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Egypt also closed access to Qatar by sea and air and have given visitors and residents two weeks to leave the country. Niger Super Eagles are back in the country to prepare for their opening African Cup of Nations qualifier against South Africa. The team is currently in Abuja and are expected to depart for Uyo later this week. The game against South Africa takes place in Uyo this Saturday. The Eagles wrapped up preparations for the match by defeating Togo 3-0 in its final friendly match. Now to a rather sad news, a former midfielder of the Ivorian national team, Czech Chiote, has passed away. Chiote, who represented Newcastle in the English Premier League, died on Monday after collapsing during training in China. He was just 30. He joined Chinese second-tier side Beijing Enterprises in February this year after ending his seven-year spell at Newcastle. World number one Andy Murray has joined a, start, a star studded in the 2017 French Open quarterfinals. The Brit defeated his opponent 3-6-3, 6-4 and 6-4 to reach his seventh French Open quarterfinal. The 30-year-old will be looking for his first French Open title this, this time. He joins a quarterfinal lineup which includes nine-time champion Rafael Nadal, Djokovic, as well as world number six, Dominic Thiem, and Japanese seed, K. Nishikori. Well, that's all we have on News Now. Thank you very much for watching. I am Thelma Okuru.